It's here, we know it's here. We see things on the internet almost every day. Human trafficking, a crime growing across America. No city is immune. They just keep them in a hotel or in another facility. Thousands of girls and boys trapped in the sex trade, many underage, many hidden in the shadows. We're seeing a lot more familial traffic to victims. Family members um, or very close members to the family are actually exploiting these youth. Human trafficking is complex trauma. It's a trauma that's happened over and over and over. It's not a single rape. The response and what happens is so different real estate businesses if somebody doesn't have the funding. Katie Roche is a budding entrepreneur and kind of time period creating her own consulting company of generating credible leads for small businesses and find out what it is that they need what kind of you know product they have and they sell and then they get a, a batch of actual appointments instead of leads. There was a time in your life though that you probably could not have envisioned the person who's sitting here today. Definitely. There were some really dark times in my life, you know, one when I was actually experiencing um, hell on earth. Katie's parents split up, her mom moving her to another state. In the summers, she'd go back to visit her dad's side of the family in Oregon. During that time, I started being, you know, molested and sexually abused by a family member. The next summer, Katie's uncle recruited her cousin to help him. She was only eight years old. So was her cousin, and he became her trafficker. Exploitation uh, that took place online, you know, this was 12 years ago. Chat rooms were basically the thing. He would present me, having me type or, you know, him typing, pretending to be me. People would ask for specific things, you know, they wanted pictures. He would provide what they wanted and then came to a point where he realized, I can get more out of this. Um, and so that just kind of evolved um, into selling sex. Her family traveled the state going to rodeos. Katie's uncle and cousin trafficking her out of a trailer. At the time, I didn't know what it was, and it really didn't matter. It was just, it was horrific. I didn't really have a choice over what was what was happening. You know, I basically experienced the same thing every day over and over again. I got desensitized. It continued for eight years. Katie turned to drugs and alcohol to cope and practically stopped eating. There was a part of me that just wanted to die. Um, maybe I didn't want, you know, to kill myself, but I just thought it would be better just waste away. One day she passed out at school and CPS got involved, sending her to a rehab facility. Do you think those teachers saved her life? Yeah, I can remember specific people who um, didn't turn and look the other way. For people who say, why didn't you just leave? Why didn't you just call the police? It's not that simple. No, uh, it's definitely not that simple. Fear encompasses it more than anything. Things that were said to me, if you, you know, don't do what we say, well, then we're going to go after your younger sister. And then that fear is like, well, I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to keep doing what what they're asking of me. And the longer that, that it went on, um, you know, really the more intense the fear was and the stronger the psychological, um, you know, chains were. How psychologically damaging is sex trafficking? It's a game changer. I mean, it reworks our brain system, not just physiologically, but psychologically as well. Dr. Robin Eubank works at the Youth Opportunity Center in Delaware County. It changes their world. It changes their belief system and their value system. They're supposed to trust that adults will keep them safe. And they go through these experiences and it reworks that thinking. Um, they learn that you can't trust other people. The people that love you the most are the ones that hurt you the most. The traffickers, master manipulators. Some people have even referred to them as some of the best psychologists because they use theoretical principles that we use in psychology to entice these individuals to gain their trust and to build a relationship. In complex trauma bonding, victims develop an unhealthy relationship with their abuser. The abuser will sometimes be nice and that will feel so good to them and they'll be very excited. Um, but then sometimes not be so nice. And that's what we call intermittent reinforcement, like a slot machine, if you will. Where these girls have been erased. That part of their brain that says this isn't right doesn't control the part that says I need help. No one has ever told you that they would beat you or your family if you say it's easy to just run away. A sex trafficking sting in Fort Wayne just last week shows those fears and threats firsthand. Detectives found an ad for possible prostitution on the website Backpage and set up an appointment. 
When they arrived at the motel, they saw Sean Earls and Amber Brooking leaving. The prostitute was inside. She told the officers that she had just met Earls on Facebook a week earlier. She said she had to pay Earls half of what she earned. He had already slapped her across the face once when she didn't get the money. And he told her if she tried to leave or tell anyone what was happening, he'd kill her. Fort Wayne police arrested Earls for promoting prostitution. Brooking, whose back page ad is still active, was also arrested, but not for prostitution. Now Katie shares her story, speaking at conferences across the state, hoping to educate the public and help other girls trapped in the sex trade. I don't see myself as a victim anymore. Um, in fact, I don't even like that word. I say I was victimized because I was. I'm not going to let what happened to me drag me down for the rest of my life. I want to be happy and I want to be successful um, and I want to um, to basically show people that, you know, there's life after after trauma because you're stuck in a situation for a period of time doesn't mean that you have to be stuck in it forever. So what would you say to somebody who is in it now? Uh, that you're worth it, um, you know, that, uh, that there are people who are fighting for you, there are people who are out there, um, and to, to try to, uh, to reach out. Um, that can be really difficult, you know, but I think that um, there's always a way, so uh, look for that way and then, um, and then take the risk.